Thank you so much for joining us for our all day live alert. The Minnesota Timberwolves have added veteran guard Monty Morris in a trade deal with the Pistons. We are expected to be introduced to Morris any minute now. Let's head out to the podium where we are expected to see him soon. Choose the lot. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Chase. Um, yeah, I want to welcome Monte Morris uh, to the team. Super excited. Um, obviously, we have history together. He's he's uh, helped me look way smarter than I am. Um, just a, a consummate pro. Um, it's been through a lot, seen a lot of big games. Um, so we feel f super fortunate to add him to a, a strong core. Um, want to thank Shake Milton and Troy Brown, who could not be better people and, and really, really good basketball players. You know, unfortunately, to get something good, you have to give up something good. So those two guys are completely um, first-class guys, and they'll be missed. Um, you know, obviously, Monte, his time in Denver, um, started in D.C. He's coming off an injury, recently got back to the court. Um, he's super excited to kind of uh, be back in the playoff mix. He's pretty well known in these parts, and Iowa State is, pretty, uh, is a pretty popular alum group in, in the Twin Cities. Um, so we were just talking about that. But um, you're not here to talk to me. You're here to talk to Tay. And um, again, thanks for coming out. And uh, I'm excited to have you, Tay. Yeah. Monte, John Krasinski from The Athletic. Just Can you just take us through your feeling of uh, how the trade went down and then coming into the situation that you're in here with the Timberwolves? Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I mean, I thank God every day. Um, just I was able to fight through this long process with my injury, um, being hurt before the season. Um, not really knowing, you know, when I would be back um, this season and everything. So when the trade went down, um, I was just happy. My family was happy just to, you know, come to this culture. Um, it's been already going well since the beginning of the year. You know, I'm just here to add on to it and help and, you know, get in the playoffs and make a deep run. You know, that's my main focus is come here and um, just add on, you know, to what's already good. So appreciate you know, Tim for uh, making the deal and putting me in a position um, to get back to playoff basketball and doing what I know. How are you feeling physically? Just mm -hmm. you've played six, seven games since since you've come back. Just what what's your state kind of as you try to get going here? Yeah, I mean, physically I feel good. Um, I was able to do a, li a live practice like three days ago. We had a live practice in Detroit. Um, got up and down, felt good. Um, I think my biggest thing is just um, ramping up and getting back to – um, just getting back to Monte. Um, I just got to trust everything because I'm fully healed. I just got to, you know, do what I do. And I think that should be nothing hard to do. I just got to keep getting the reps, and um, I should be able to get back to that in no time. Whenever a player gets traded, there's uncertainty and unfamiliarity. What, what does it mean to have Tim here, the guy who, who drafted you, and have that kind of you know, a relationship already established as you come to a new place? I mean, it's, it's pretty good um, for me just to be comfortable, good and bad. You know, he's going to tell me, you know, if I'm slacking, he's going to tell me when I'm doing well and things that he's going to be looking for that I can help the group. So, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of surreal um, to have a relationship, you know, from a guy that drafted, drafted me back in 2017 and still able to do, you know, business, the business side with him now. So... It's my goal to just give him back everything and, um, you know, kind of make him make the trade look good. I just got to play good. So that's my goal. Tim, you guys obviously scout everybody across the league, but is it easier to have a lot of confidence when executing a deal when you know somebody as well as you know Monte? Yeah, certainly. I mean, we can all watch video and see who's good and bad at basketball, but it's, it's a very delicate balance, chemistry, and the success we've had is not just – because of the talent, and we have you know the best coach staff in the league, and we have um, these players who really got to know each other. So continuity is extremely important. So 
uh, when we're having a year like we're having, you don't want to upset the apple cart. And to know a guy like Tay who's always, uh, we joke, um, I joke with him quite a bit. We first interviewed him back, he had about 66 cousins. I realized that none of cousins, he's a pretty popular guy. Um, he's just a, a seamless teammate, a super positive teammate, um, a communicator, a guy that brings people together. And we, we knew his personality, not just his game, would fit in well with the group that we're really proud of. Monte, what do you think the main role of a point guard is on a team? Um, I would say uh, one of my biggest traits, you know, Tim just, you know, hit hit that was just bringing guys together. I think for me, um, learning everybody's personality on and off the court, I feel like that will make my transition better just to know where guys like the basketball, you know, what they like doing, you know, off the court, a family situation and things like that. That's the type of guy I am. And, um it helps the transition on the court as a point guard once you kind of know, you know, guys on and off the court. You had a long career in, in Denver that culminated in a year starting, and then what was it going to Washington, new franchise and everything, but also getting over 60 games as a starter? Did that kind of ratify some things within you in terms of being able to handle a second team, different team? Um, yeah, I would say yes. Um, just the opportunity, you know, it's a blessing to have a job in this league, you know, anywhere really um, in life to have a job. So I'm always thankful. But um, the D.C. switch up from Denver definitely um, showed me that I'm able to adapt in different environments. Um, and I was able to um, have a year there uh, with some great guys you know, who, who um, are high level in the league. So. I know I can adapt anywhere, you know, it just takes time, and I'm excited, beyond excited to be here. Your marquee virtue is probably that you don't turn the ball over, and yet you still rack up assists. Mm -hmm. What does that require? I mean, what what are the things that, how can you be active and, and enable your teammates and, and still really keep a lid on the turnovers? Um, I don't go into a game, like, you know, just like, oh, I'm not going to turn the ball over. I just, I just kind of, like, play the game how it's supposed to be played. If I draw two guys, you know, get off the ball, not really try to force things, but also just being aggressive enough to the defense can respect me. Um, so also it's a lot of film going into it. Most games I get with our video guys. So I kind of know what defenders going to be on me, how they going to guard me. So I'm kind of usually a step ahead of, you know, the game instead of just going into the game and trying to figure it out there. Vinci recently has put a couple of ball handlers on the floor and with the back-to-backs and everything, you may be starting some, not starting others. Is that kind of versatility something that you've you know dealt with most of your career and is that something you're also looking forward to? Yes, you know, I'm looking forward to any situation um, that I can help the group, you know, with me coming in in the middle of the season. I have to, you know, hit the ground running and, um, you know, be a great addition to it. So whatever role that is for me to keep this train rolling, you know, in the way it's going. You know, I got to be um, 110% in that role, and um, I'm willing to do that. And uh, also, you know, I'm not a guy who just needs to be on the ball. I can space and shoot the ball as well and make plays off the bounce. So um, whatever role, whoever I'm out there with, you know, I just got to make the best of it. Monte, on getting back to the old Monte, like where are you at shape-wise? How far away are you from being the old Monte? Uh, I mean – I, I was out for a long, a long period of time. So, I mean, realistically, um, I would say I just need to, you know, ramp up my strength and conditioning stuff as far as running. I'm, I've played in games. Um, I'm not dead tired, but I know it's another notch I can get to, and I, I'll be able to get to, to that real, real soon. So, Monte, you mentioned that uh, you played with some guys pretty high in the league in Denver, but what are your thoughts on playing with some of these guys here on this team right now? What kind of runs through your mind seeing the talent around you? Um, you know, it's, it's fun, especially watching um, and playing against the guys over the years, you know, special talent. And um, I'm just excited to get out there. You know, they play my style of basketball, share the ball, um, making shots. But the biggest thing is just if you're watching the team from afar, and don't know much about them. You can tell that everybody linked together. Um, everybody got handshakes together. I see they choking, smiling. You know, somebody dunk on somebody, they point at them. You know, that's just stuff I'm seeing. So who don't want to be a part of, you know, something like that? And um, I tilt my hat on that, being around good guys 
And um, it's just energy. I feel like, you know, once one person got good energy, it trickles down the line. So I think that's how I feel about it. And I don't know if you can answer this, maybe Tim can answer this. Uh, do you expect to be in the lineup on Monday with the team? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I yeah, I hope so. No, li no limitations for you to be in the lineup. Yeah. Okay. Mate, you touched on it a little bit, but to go from a team that was mm -hmm. headed to the lottery to a team that wants to go deep into the playoffs, what is that like just from a competitive standpoint to know you're jumping into real high-level, high level, high uh, high leverage games right now? Uh, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of experience, you know, playoff games and just been on team before um, that had high expectations as well. So it's not really going to change my focus. I mean, when I was in Detroit, no matter what the record was, you know, I would show up to work every day and compete at a high level. Um, I never lost that edge. I mean, I don't go off how I perform based on the results, whether I'm winning or losing. So important to me here is is just another step. I'm not, I don't need to change my mindset because I never really changed it. It's just unfortunate, you know, the position, you know, with the record and things like that. So. We were uh, talking to Rudy last night in Milwaukee, and he said he's watched film of you and noticed that you like to throw lobs. Yeah. Is that something that you're looking forward to, that pairing, working with him in that pick and roll? Yeah, you know, he's been playing against Rudy. You know, he's been on ball. He sets really good good screens, and uh, I always have to look over my shoulder because he will always nail me. So I'm excited to uh, get a chance to play in a pick and roll with him, a lob threat, um, a guy with great experience, you know, a guy that block shots and alter the game, you know. Um, so I'm excited, and uh, hopefully we can get our chemistry down pack um, quickly. Tim, would you say it was a goal of yours to add some playoff experience to the second unit at this deadline? Yeah, I think you know certainly we have not enjoyed playoff success for a couple of decades, and it's oftentimes um, you know hard to learn that until you've done it. So. We, it was a focus of ours the last couple of weeks, trying to find guys who have been there. Uh, as Monte alluded to it, he's played a lot of big games, so he won't be in all of the moment. He's had success uh, both individually and as a team, so yeah, we thought it would be um, could be beneficial to our group if we added a guy like Tay who's seen a lot of big games. How many connections do you still have at Iowa State? Uh, I, got a, I got a lot of connections. I mean, even when I got traded here, it was a bunch of – Cyclone Alley fans, they were just like, welcome, we're going to be at a lot of games. I mean, when I, whenever I would come play in Minnesota, it would be a bunch of Iowa State fans. So I'm excited to play in front of, you know, the fans that's still around um, this area um, as well. So I'm excited for that. You see a lot of similarities between your game and Mike Conley's? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Mike, um, his pace, you know, he can get in the paint. He can shoot the three ball. And his experience, you know, um, I had a chance to play against Mike a few times, well, a lot in Denver, rather, and we would match up against each other. We would just talk during the games, and we would play playoff series against each other a lot. Um, so I'm still here to keep learning from him. You know, that's a great guy, great player to learn from. Um, I just like the way he uses the pick and roll. He can finish with both hands in the paint and get his team involved, and he brings guys together. Um, and I feel like I can keep learning from him. A guy like that. Tim, you guys managed to hold on to your second round picks in the upcoming years here. Is that important just given where this roster is and maybe where it looks like it's going? Yeah, it's always good to have picks and not have picks. So, you know, we, we uh, the last couple of weeks is a really awkward time because the whole idea of like trading, you know, people is kind of weird and gross. Um, but the picks were pretty coveted. Uh, we had a lot of conversations that, you know, we could have done additional things, but we, we didn't think the price kind of merited uh, the return. So it's it'll be fun this off season to have some of those things at our disposal. Um, we're gonna have a first round pick. We have, you know, a second that can be pretty good. Um, and you're always trying to add, you know, any team, regardless of where they're on the cycle. You got to replenish with young players. I mean, his first year in Denver, he played one NBA game, um, and now he became one of the elite backups in the league. Now he's you know, he's a starter the last couple of years. So I think it shows the value that you can potentially find in second round picks. <laughs>
that will do it for us. Hope you have a terrific weekend. and Enjoy your Super Bowl fun if you're into that. We'll see you back here on Monday morning for the Fox 9 Morning News and back here at 11. Enjoy, and the news continues right here on Fox Local on your smart TV. You're watching Fox 9 All Day. Thanks for joining us for All Day on Fox Local. I'm BC O'Neillieri. A major announcement on the future of the M Health Fairview Partnership. The University of Minnesota plans to purchase four academic facilities that make up the U of M Medical 